It took six years for Hawke's Bay Company, the Apple Press, to create a premium range of single variety apple juices from blemished or ugly fruit that would otherwise have gone to waste. In that time, they've built a state-of-the-art bottling plant with the capacity to fill up to 60 million bottles of juice each year. I was growing and exporting apples, but we had a lot of apples that were just going to waste. And they had marks or blemishes on which nutritionally were as good as the fresh-eating apples. And we wanted to do something worthwhile with it. The ugly fruit or the cosmetically blemished product is are apples like this that have a cosmetic defect or a low colour. And so we make the world's best apple juice out of it. New Zealand uh, apple growers are the most innovative in the world. They have developed with the, the scientists here in New Zealand some of the world's leading apples. And we felt that if we went individually to individual apples, we could then develop a range of fruit juice like wine and olive oil, which actually denotes the flavour and experience of drinking a freshly picked apple. It's not just one single process. We, we do have the, the best ingredient, which is the apples. Our apples go through the same process as fresh apples that uh, the customer would uh, pick up in a supermarket, but it has all of the five-star treatment of the, the cool stores to all of the technical uh, processing that we do at, at the factory. Ours is a single press. Uh, we don't use any heat in that process. We're cold pressing and we only press the juice once. We remove the oxygen out of the juice, we flush it with nitrogen, and it gives us an extended chilled shelf life. We use half the plastic of normal plastic bottles. Yeah, we're confident that it is the, the world's best tasting apple juice. We have an, a strategic partnership with TNG Global to get all of the apples, they're fully traceable back to the orchards. So we have a partnership with them where we can get their varieties of Jazz and Envy. So we've licensed their uh, fresh fruit varieties into our juice form. When Sally and I were looking at it, we were looking for a, a toll manufacturer or a co-packer. We weren't looking at investing capital. We couldn't find any uh, plants in New Zealand or Australia. And we were sitting here one day under the apple tree and Sally said to me, you know, getting a little frustrated because we couldn't quite get our dream to come to life, said, why don't we build a plant? I took a couple of breaths and it took us two or three years. We did the review, we raised the capital and now today we've got the, a world leading technology in plant. We needed a substantial uh, partner to help us get the factory up and running. And so we approached Fonterra Brands New Zealand and we we're very pleased that they're on board. We wouldn't be here without them and so we manufacture a lot of their lifestyle beverages for them. The capacity of the plant is around about 50 to 60 million bottles per year. We've only just started filling that up, so we have a, a couple of more years of hard work to actually you know, build that volume. But we're confident that it's there. I guess the biggest challenge has been the fact that when we were building the facility and the product, we were also trying to build the business. So often when people are developing a product, they have an existing business and they're pretty much just developing a product or they're building a plant, but we were actually you know, developing a product, building a plant and trying to grow sales and build a business all at the same time with not too many people. So that was quite challenging. That was probably the biggest challenge. Making a product with zero additives is really important because that's what consumers are after. They want something as clean and simple as they can possibly get. Um, us food technologists like to be able to add stuff, but really simple is hard, but we wanted to achieve that. So it's been more difficult to make something with zero additives, but that's been our objective, and we've managed to succeed with, with that. So it's pretty exciting. I'm really excited with what we've developed. Consumers want something that tastes really, really fresh with a really, really long shelf life, and those two things often don't go hand in hand. So technically it's quite challenging, um, which is why we've um, invested in some significant technology, which is giving us that magic track which allows us to actually convert a fresh apple into a, something that tastes like the fresh apple from which it came. So the shelf life of our product is nine months, chilled, so it's a chilled product. Um, and the way we achieve that is through the technology that we use. So basically we've employed um, what we call um, what's aseptic filling technology, which means we fill our product cold in a sterile environment. So we make sure there's no air or bugs in the product, and then we fill it in a sterile environment. It's a bit like an operating theatre. It's completely clean, which means that you can um, remove any bacteria that are in the product, and that means that you get the long shelf life. It sounds very simple, but that technology costs millions of dollars, and we bought that in from Germany. 
So we blow our own bottles on site. So um, a lot of manufacturers bring bottles in and then they fill them. We actually have an integrated system where we bring a little test tube-like looking creation and that's basically goes through our system, it blows it, it's heated up and it blows into a bottle and then that's filled and it's all done in a completely enclosed space and that means that that's how you keep it sterile. Fresh apples all taste completely different. Apple juice historically hasn't tasted different. So I guess what we're saying is it's like wine. You can buy different wines from different grapes and they all taste very different and they credit the grape from which they've come. So we're doing the same thing with apples. So, you know, a jazz apple juice tastes completely different than an MV that tastes a Pink Lady or a Raw Gala or a Brabian, whichever profile people like in terms of acidity or sweetness. Um, and we've done that through selecting quite specific varieties um, for a number of reasons, most of which give us a profile of flavours so everything from quite sweet to quite acidic because consumers like different flavour profiles so it's pretty much a matter of having a, having a variety and then letting people select based on their own likes I guess and dislikes. We're looking at innovations in terms of apple varieties and we're also looking at innovations in terms of what uh, consumers want in other markets. So that might mean bringing texture, um, it might mean um, just bringing different other combinations of fruits and flavours to, to a product um, but really the big global mega trend they talk about is health and is health and wellness. So it's basically providing consumers with products that are more healthful or have healthful benefits or ingredients and that's really our focus in the next sort of R&D um, phase we've got coming on next, yeah.